In today's documentary, we'll be combining our greatest hits to give you a complete guide to some of the must-try street food all over Paris. We'll have crepes, sandwiches, ethnic food, some of the best pastries you can eat on the go, and we'll also showcase the best fresh market in Paris. Allez, on y va. Today we're doing a pit stop in the Montparnasse area, and this place Aristot is highly recommended, and we heard it was an American concept mixed with French food, probably because there's bagels and hot dogs, but this place is very popular with young people. I don't know if there's a university around here, but it reminds me of young professionals and students, and man, you're gonna wait for something, but what you're waiting for is really good and delicious. They have a lot of different choices of breads you could get this on, like if you wanted a bagel sandwich or a regular baguette. I chose the dark bread with lots of seeds because I love that. You can get ham, you can get chicken, you can get a lot of things. But today, I chose salmon and avocado. And this bread, it's, it's got a light bite, but it's just a, it's a subtle light bite. With all of the seeds, it's like a little bit crispy and a little bit chewy at the same time. And the cucumbers give it a nice crisp crunch. The avocado gives it a nice saucy kind of feeling. And the freshness of the salmon, crispness of the arugula, it's just so good. Is that good? It is very good. All right. It's good. Now, on to the next stop. We're here at a restaurant called Boulet, which basically means meatball. And what they sell here is sandwiches with meatballs and bowls with meatballs served on top of a salad. You can get beef, chicken, lamb, fish, or even vegetarian meatballs, but this place is oh my god delicious. And today I got the lamb meatball sandwich on pita and with the crunchiness of the garlicky cucumber and all of the flavor. I mean, it's just, it's hard to describe, but just an explosion of flavor. So good. You, you just have to come and try it. That is garlicky deliciousness. Oh, garlic. That's good for me. This place is down a quiet little street. It's a little hole in the wall. If you didn't know it was here, you'd never find it because this place is for the business people that work in the area to come and grab a really high quality, low cost, amazing meal. Here, we're right by the Grand Boulevard, so we're close to the covered passages, the Geoffroy Panorama. But these guys also have a restaurant by Riamur Sebastopol, and I can't wait to go try that one too. If you're in this area, this hidden gem is a definite must stop. Next up is at Maison Bergeron near the Eiffel Tower. This is a local boulangerie that makes all kinds of breads, classic bakeries, and they have a great selection of sandwiches, crotte monsieur, pain gourmand, and the famous charcoal black bread baguette. They also have salads and vegetarian options. Today we picked up a couple of sandwiches to eat near the Eiffel Tower. So I got the black charcoal baguette with truffle flavored brie on my sandwich and oh my God, it's delicious. I mean, just yummy. <laughs> And I took the fugas, which is basically a flat bread with three cheeses and they heat it up for you and the flavor of the cheese comes out really strong. It's a bit filling, it's a big thing, so if you want to take that, you could actually share it. A little bit greasy, but oh, so good. Really, really an amazing snack. This boulangerie has amazing lunch options. You can get a formule with a sandwich, a dessert, and a drink, or just a sandwich and a drink. It's just really cool. And it's right there close to uh, the Eiffel Tower. You can grab some stuff, have a picnic on the, on the lawn. That's awesome. 
So this stop is in Montmartre. It's right around the corner from the Abbes metro station near Le Mur des Jetemes, and it's called Frick Frack. And what they do here is croque monsieur, but not your regular run of the meal croque. This is a gourmet version of the croque monsieur. It's actually two chefs that are behind the concept. They make their own bread in house and they have all kinds of different flavors. A regular croque is bechamel, ham and cheese, is basically a French grilled cheese sandwich. But here they reinvented it in some really cool ways. We chose Le Titi, which is very close to the original regular croque monsieur, and it's absolutely delicious. The bread is amazing, you can really tell the difference. Now, if you want to try a really good croque monsieur, you come right here. This is modern, this is fresh. Um, this is really good. One of my favorite croque monsieur in Paris by a long shot. So for this stop, we came to Montmartre, and we're right up the hill from the Moulin Rouge at Rue La Pique. This is right on the corner, a little fish market sandwich spot, and this is Pepon, which has fresh hot soups in the winter. I've been dying to try some here, and it is delicious. And if you're not in the mood for soup, they have sandwiches, hot dogs, croque monsieur, they have macarons and other stuff. But, and on a nice cold day, you get a soup. That's not a coffee, that's an onion soup. It's not like a French onion soup where you have the bread and cheese on top. It is just all of the flavor of an onion soup right here in a cup. That thing's got flavor. Let me show you. That's a steaming hot soup on a cold winter's day. So much flavor, I love it, I love it. And if you want something sweet after that, right up the street here is the chocolate Eileen Aline, but that is amazing chocolate and it's on our top three list of best macarons in Paris. So this stop is Bouli's and we found this place in a gastronomy expo and tried a couple of things, had to come back and see what more they have and they call everything here the shoes and a shoe is really just a cream puff so we had them filled with the sweet stuff before but in this location they have sandwiches so you can get ham and cheese you can get a vegetarian a blue cheese and walnut and all kinds of different flavor sandwiches that are made actually on cream puff sandwich so it's not heavy it's just an extraordinary light delicious thing a sandwich on a cream puff they also have a breakfast so like ham and eggs in the morning or just cream puffs with whatever it is that you're gonna put on it or a four o'clock snack or an afternoon snack with just the little cream puffs with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, hot chocolate. It's amazing little stop near the Grand Boulevards on the side by Strasbourg Saint Denis. I am so excited to try this. We are at Canard Street, which is a little bit of an unusual spot because here they have burgers, but they have beef burgers, chicken burgers, veggie burgers, lamb burgers, and we got the confit canard or a duck burger. So I can't wait to try that. This is the formula lunch with the french fries and a beverage. Oh. This burger, made with duck, has figs and goat cheese and red onions and a lot of yum, so. It doesn't taste like a burger. It tastes like a warm sandwich. It's a um, canard haché, which is uh, ground duck, but it feels like it's a slice of duck and it's got an awful lot of really good flavor. Oh, with the fig and the goat cheese. This is unusual street food and it's marvelous. You gotta try a bite.
yeah, it's sweet and salty, and you get the sweetness from I don't know what. And the figs. The figs. This is really good. Really good, decent French fries, a great burger, a drink. That's a great meal. So this stop is L'Eclair de Genie, and we went to the food court by the Galerie Lafayette. And take a look at this. This is the salted caramel Eclair. And what L'Eclair de Genie is famous for is for taking the Eclair, which is a staple of French pastry, and take it to a whole new level. So we're gonna taste it and see what the hype is all about. Oh yeah. I'm not a huge fan of Eclair. This is not my go-to in a French pastry, but this Eclair is extraordinary. I mean, it's just, it is next level. The only bummer that I have is I'm gonna have to share this with Colleen, because I wish I could eat the whole thing, but I think you're gonna enjoy this, uh, Colleen. Traditionally in Eclair, when you go in a French bakery, it's usually two flavor. It's chocolate or coffee. That's pretty much what it is. But here they do all kinds of flavor, all kinds of look. This is caramel, which I've never seen, salted caramel Eclair but they have raspberries, they have lemon, they have strawberry, they have all kinds of flavor. This is really, really good. Yeah, we might have to go get another one. You wanna try it, Colleen? I can taste the butteriness of the caramel. This is an extraordinary eclair. Like the little shoe pastry that the, that the cream is inside is a very buttery, it's not spongy, it's not anything other than just fabulous. It's um, nice and thick and thin and airy and buttery all at the same time, and then that salted buttered caramel is so buttery and so caramely i don't know how they do it it's just good and they make chocolate too and it comes with a little button of chocolate right on the eclair all right so for this stop we went to omosubi gombe and i hope i'm saying that right so what we got is this little thing here so this is what i got so think about this as a giant sushi. And it's a pyramid of rice with spicy chicken in it. So, I can't wait. Okay, this is really good. I'm gonna let Colleen finish it because it's a bit spicy and, and Colleen likes spicy food a lot more than I do. And I can already uh, taste that um, it's a little, spi a little too spicy for me. So, I'm gonna try the next thing. I like spicy food, so. Here goes my spicy bite. Mm. You have the sticky rice, the seaweed wrap, and I don't know what they put in that chicken, but oh, it's so flavorful, so delicious. And let me tell you, unless you have a really big appetite, one of these is more than enough because it's just very satisfying. I love it. And the next thing that we got, which is another amazing Japanese street food, which is Japanese chicken nuggets. They're called karagi, and they are absolutely magnificent. You can taste that the chicken is very uh, moist and tender. It's not dry at all. It tastes like a chicken nugget, but it's just really good. Like, you know, if you had like a, a five-star chicken nugget, that's what it would taste like. I can't wait to bite it. Mm. The chicken is really tender and juicy. And I was thinking that it would be a really crispy, crispy kind of um, a coating. It's a very flavorful, very flavorful breading. And I don't know what the flavors are, but it's got a hint of soy, a little bit of something exotic, and a whole lot of yummy. Taking another bite. That's a safe bet. If you wanna give your kids something delicious, something a little bit familiar, they're not expensive at all. Again, it's very filling. That's chicken nugget, it's good. here at Gem La Patisserie. This is a place to come and get something sweet, cup of coffee, but specifically macarons. And these are fresh, homemade, right here on the store, and they have exotic flavors. So this one is tamarind, but we also got a coconut, uh, ginger, and I like this place because these macarons are so fresh and delicious, and it's a good place to stop when you're around the opera. I wasn't sure what to expect with a tamarind macaron. It's light, it's flavorful, it's really good. But the one that I was really excited to try is the ginger. This one, it's not a, it's not a hard shell, but it's a light veneer of crisp. And that cookie inside is just, 
It's just like you're, you took a real quick breath of ginger and then the flavor just stays with you. It's really yummy. I like that one. I got the uh, coconut nut cocoa. I'm gonna give it a shot. This is a good macaron. So this stop is in a little restaurant. It's kind of like a fast food, French fast food called La Brigade or the Brigade. And they offer a little, what they call a market, which is French fries. And then you get a meat with it. So they have saucisse, they have chicken, they have beef. And then you get a little sauce with it. So I got au poivre sauce and you get a little salad. And it's like a great meal with a beverage. They offer cocktail. You can get a mojito, you can get wine, you can get beer. So this is an awesome spot. And we're literally like a block and a half away from the opera. This is good. You should try it. Okay. In France, when they say saucisse, what they're talking about is kind of somewhere between a um, kielbasa or like a Polish sausage. It's very flavorful. It's got a good thick skin on the outside and it's yummy and I like it with the apoab sauce. I never thought about that. I usually think mustard with a sausage like that, but this is great. It's just a great idea to just sit and have a little nibble in the afternoon and a peril spritzer or mojito. But it's a great spot for people watching. Just a, just a great spot. We just came from Dochilak, which is a Korean place. They have bento boxes and stuff you can eat in or take out. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So let's start with the appetizer, which are the dumplings. So in France, they call dumplings raviolis. But let's try this. It's not really like a Chinese dumpling. I mean, it looks like a dumpling. It's made like a dumpling. It tastes a little bit more like seaweed than I'm used to with a, with a Chinese dumpling. And it's yummy. And it comes with some soup. Just a little cup of soup. It's funny, that's like a, like a leek misu kind of a uh, soup. And of course, as many Asian restaurants are, it's a good place for um, vegetarian options as well. And here is the bibimbap. I got this one with, it has a black rice on the bottom. It really looks purple, but they call it a black rice. The vegetables, some um, bits of egg, and we took the beef option. There's a really nice flavor to that. I know this restaurant came very highly recommended, and now I know why. It's very tasty. It's not, it's not a cuisine that I'm really familiar with, but it's, it has a lot of flavor. You can compare it to Japanese or Chinese food, whatever you're familiar with, but it definitely has its own flavor. Well, that's very yummy. It's very delicious. We're here at the Boulangerie Joseph, which is right next to the entrance of the Choiselle Passage. And they, you can get all kinds of stuff here, like you can in any boulangerie. They have ready-made salads and sandwiches. They have sandwiches that you can get more panini-style heated, a croque monsieur. But what I got today is the pizza fuete with spinach, chicken, and cheese. And they heat it up for you right here. Very nice. So we went to Aki Boulangerie on Rue Sainte Anne, which is a French Japanese boulangerie, which is what you have in this area. And they have a melon bread, which is very interesting. Never had it. Let me open this. Oh, ha, ha. look at that. It's very light, very interesting bread. It's a good snack, actually. A lot of sugar coating on top. It tastes like a brioche, but not a traditional brioche, a Japanese brioche. It's a very interesting bread. I like it. It's not too sweet, so it's a good snack. And it's a very interesting concept of mixing the French culture and the Japanese culture inside of a uh, bakery. So they have all kinds of things. They have sushi, Asian cuisine, and then the traditional French uh, bakery stuff that you would expect. And then this thing, which is a brioche, but Japanese style, so it's a very interesting thing. I don't know what kind of melon that is for melon bread. It's very fluffy, almost like a challah bread. Tastes a little bit like a challah bread, only top level is crispy with a sugar coat. But in the Aki Bakery, they have regular French baked goods, but with a Japanese flair. So they have matcha flavored muffins and eclairs with different Japanese kind of uh, influence. Or you can get a Japanese salad or all kinds of different 
Japanese food to go, and any of the formula type things that you would get in a traditional French bakery, but with a Japanese twist. So it's pretty nice, good to know about. Today we're gonna go eat a crepe, and there is no better place to eat a crepe in Paris than the Rue de Montparnasse. And this street has probably 10 to 20 creperies, but the one we're going today is renowned to be one of the best. So follow me. So this is a tiny little restaurant in that street. This one has an amazing reputation. And what I like about it is it's not owned by a big group. And you have some sitting on the inside and then half the tables on the outside. Um, but it looks very quaint and you're in the street, people walking by and this is great. All the crepes that they have on the menu, they're all named after a women's name. And I think we're gonna go for La Michelle and La Francine, which sound delightful. Merci. This has an egg right in the middle. I didn't really catch that from the thing, but French people put eggs on things. So I'm gonna try some of this. You see the mustard, the grainy mustard sauce? That grainy mustard, I'm gonna get it all on my fork here. Mm. That is a very mustardy, yummy crepe. And I know why they put the mustard, because of those sausages. That's an excellent crepe. And this is a sausage morteau, which it's kind of somewhere between a kielbasa and Canadian bacon or something like that. It's a great texture, great flavor, and an amazing addition to a crepe. I love it. And it's why the mustardy mustard sauce works so well. The sausage, the galette crepe, and some salad in here. Mm, that's good. Oh, that looks like a great crepe. I haven't had a crepe with bacon like that. That's an excellent crepe. One other thing about crepes is oftentimes is uh, served as street food. A lot of these places offer sitting, so I like to actually sit down to eat my crepe. It gives me a little bit more room to enjoy the crepe. And, but you can grab it, walk with it, or sit down and eat. This crepe is, oh. I've never had that flavor before. It's got bacon and potatoes and creme fraiche and mushroom. Look at the melted butter right there. It's really a great crepe. They advertise the fact that they buy all the ingredients fresh, you know, from a local market. So this is not an industrial crepe. One of the things that's great about a crepe, if you're looking for an affordable meal in Paris, I mean, this is like 13 euros and Colleen is like 12 euros. It's not an expensive meal. I think that together we're gonna be eating here for 35 euros together. The crepe and the beverages and just really affordable and a great, great meal. We're here on Rue Rambuteau, which connects Leal all the way over to Georges Pompidou Center. And this place, Manouche, has amazing Lebanese food. And we're right here in the middle of rush hour, so be prepared for line if you come right at lunchtime. I'm ready for something delicious. I love Mideastern food and Lebanese food in Paris is amazing. So today I'm having the kafta sandwich, which has ground beef and yumminess. They made it fresh for me right there. And let's take a bite. I barely got anything in the bite and I can already taste it's amazing. The combination of flavors, the spices are just popping. You gotta try this. Yeah. You gotta try it. Mmm, that's good. You know what? It's a good change from the traditional baguette sandwich. It's just different. You've got the hummus, the meat. It's usually very fresh with the vegetables. But it's really good. And usually you can tell a place is really good because you got 20, 30 people waiting in line any time of the day. Manouche is the same owner for 22 years. They make it in right in front of you. It's obviously fresh ingredients. It's very well done. And you're in the uh, Pompidou area here, so you have a lot of ethnic food to choose from. Some are a little shady, but if you're in the mood for something different or ethnic, if you had enough cheese and baguette for a while, they have the pita au four. So they put the galette on the, on the stove. They cook it right in front of you. And then it's delicious. And if you want a dessert after that, you can go like three stores down, Bashir Ice Cream. I believe it's the original location right here by Pompidou. And you can get the ice cream with the crushed pistachio on top, which is amazing. And it's Lebanese too, so this is really good. I enjoy that. And check this out. This is my little appetizer, which I save for after the meal. And that is like a little spinach yummy dumpling. I love Mideastern spinach. It's got that vinegary kind of a feeling, but the softness and butteriness of the dough, I love those. 
the onion, the spinach, the vinegar. Now you could go down the street and get a Lebanese ice cream at Bashir, but today I took the formula lunch, which comes with a little tiny pastry, which for me is just enough today. And I'm a big pistachio fan, so I got this kind of baklava looking thing with pistachio. Mm. That thing is crispy, yummy goodness. Do I have to share? Yes. Now we're here at Little Havana, which I'm very excited about as a Miami girl to get some Cuban food. And we're right here by Leal, so let's go get some Cuban food. Ooh. I'm from Miami, I'm so happy to have Cuban oh, food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pan con lechon. lechon yes. Tostones. 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 I am so excited to try this. And I don't know how they do it in Cuba, but in Miami, that's really just gonna be pork, maybe some pork with onions, but this one has some pickled onions and coleslaw, so mm. we'll see how that's gonna go. <laughs> you got all those rich Cuban flavors. Oh yeah. It has an extra sweet crunch that I've never had in a pan con lechon before. That it feels almost like home. That's like the best of both worlds because it is so home style. Cuban pork sandwich mixed with a little French flair on top. The best of both worlds. I'm happy. And this is with the garlic sauce. One of the things that I miss most in Paris is jalapenos, because I do like spicy stuff. This isn't jalapeno, but it is a mildly spicy, sweet pepper sauce with lots and lots of garlic. It's perfection. We need to come back here. Whenever I'm homesick, bring me here. The promise. Well, let me give it a try. Yeah, as a French guy, I don't miss the Cuban sandwich. Well, because we make amazing sandwiches here in Paris. But I kind of miss it because, you know, when you live 32 years in Miami, you get used to that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can taste the lime, the vegetable. Yeah, it's a very refreshing sandwich. It's a great sandwich, actually. Colleen said that I would like the sauce, so I'm going to give it a try. It's very good. It's not too spicy. It's more tomatoey and garlicky. This is a great place. You're going to get a great meal here. And if you're Miami and you kind of like had enough of crepes and French food for a while, you come here and you'll be right back home. I love tostones and I can buy plantains and make these at home, but I don't know how to make them like that. And check this out. This is a guacamole with red onion, tomato, and the sweetness of those pineapples. Mmm, that is delicious. Just a little paprika, a little bit of lime, that guacamole and pineapple and tomato onion, like, oh man. This tastes like Miami, it's really good. So today we are in Montmartre and we're going to go to Mamiche, which is right there, which has amazing sandwiches and rolls and pastries and viennoiseries, so let's go. We got three things today. We got an amazing sandwich, which is called poulet roti and on baguette. Look at this thing. Colleen ordered a breadstick. This is a little cheese roll. That looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go and take a bite of that thing. Mmm, oh yeah. <laughs> this is, wow. Oh wow, and that was not expensive. This is, this is an amazing snack. Let me take another bite. Mmm, oh man. This is my new favorite. This is really, really good. And I haven't seen that in other places. This is an extraordinary sandwich. So here we are in Montmartre. It's the, uh, the lower part of Montmartre. We're down from the hill. Honestly, this boulangerie is worth the 15 minute walk from the Sacré-Cœur to go there to eat this. This is really amazing. This is a croissant dough, a lot of butter. Just think croissant butter, ham and cheese roll together. It's crispy, it's tender in the inside. It's just, I mean, it's heavenly. You gotta take a bite. Okay. Yeah. Pull it out. Like, ah. <laughs> That's what cheesy bread is supposed to taste like. It might be my new favorite too. I almost wish I ate the other sandwich first. Yeah. So I could finish on that one. I don't eat it all. <laughs> I love crispy burnt cheese and the gooey cheese on the inside. Like, that's good. 
That baguette dough feels really chewy after the, the way the roll was soft and broke up like a croissant. This one feels like I actually have to do some chewing, but the flavor is very nice. It's a roasted chicken, but it almost feels like a chicken salad. Very light, a little mayo, a little peppers. It's kind of an herb mayonnaise, and it's very nice. And you can tell that it's a roasted chicken because you got a little bit of the skin, like that's an actual roasted chicken. It's not some deli thing that they bought and sliced. That's roasted chicken. Mm. This is an amazing sandwich. The bread is really crunchy. It's a really good baguette. This is really good. And what's amazing with this is that you can get yourself a crappy sandwich right there by Pigal. Three minutes walking from here because it's super touristic. And all you have to do is walk like five, 10 minutes, find that boulangerie and get an amazing sandwich. All you need to do is know where to go. And now you do. Last but not least is this little stick with chorizo. It's almost like a chorizo pizza because you have that same kind of dough, like a pizza dough, and the cheese and the chorizo, like I think pepperoni, like a pepperoni pizza with more bread than pepperoni and there's no tomato sauce. It's kind of nice. Today, we're right by the Palais Royale, not far from the Louvre, and we're here to try some Korean street food. So let's go see what they have. That is so light that you can tell there's a skin on the ravioli, but it doesn't taste like there's any. You're gonna love this, try one. I'm using my fingers, I'm sorry, but I'm not very skilled with this dish. Well, this is good, it's very fine. It's a lot finer than what I've eaten in uh, Chinese restaurants. I don't know how the Korean get their chicken so tender. It is the crispiest coating, the softest, most tender chicken inside that I know. And this one has like green onions and sesame, feels like honey or something. It's just, um, it's just a great combination. This is very good. It's a very interesting fried chicken bite. Oh, this is good. I would order that again. In France, the marchés are a way of life. It's where the locals go to get their stuff, like flowers, meat, produce, all kinds of cheeses, local stuff, prepared foods. They even have clothes and hats and sunglasses and all kinds of stuff. But the problem is they're not open every day. There are 64 marchés in the city of Paris and they each have their own days and times that they're open. So in this video, we're gonna take you to five of the best marchés, the biggest, the most robust, and we'll tell you where they are and when they're open so you can come and discover them when you're in Paris. Are you ready to go? I am so ready to go. Allez, on y va. Let's go. Now we're going to the Marché at Marbourg Mutualité and we're going to meet our friend Karen who just flew in from Canada and check it out. So let's go. So this is a very typical French market and it has everything from vegetables, fresh cheese, charcuterie, all kinds of things to eat. And it also has clothes and jewelry and wooden objects and uh, you know different kind of curiosities and stuff. And it's a great place just to come, I don't know, try on a hat, get something for a picnic, bring something back to your Airbnb, some nice, really fresh things. The Marche at Marbert Mutuality is open on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And you have to come in the morning because they all close uh, at noon or just a little past. So, great spot. And for the charcuterie and picnic, there you go. And here is Maison des Adèles, which is one of the top bakeries in uh, Latin quarters. And you can tell it's a good bakery because you have a line of people waiting to get in. And the metro is right here. You come out of the metro and voila. And that is a fresh herb milk. Check it out.
This Marche is Place Mange, and Place Mange is a stop on the Line 7 Metro with an escalator that comes up right at the market. And in here you have fabulous little clothing shops, uh, fruits, vegetables, meat, olive dealers, nut dealers, all kinds of stuff, like most markets. But this one also has a gorgeous fountain and other particular little things like regional stuff and just some charming little things and I'm really enjoying wandering around right here in a cool shady spot covered right off the metro in the middle of summer so this one's really cool and it's also a great place to pick up some yummy stuff and head over to the Jardin du Plant for a picnic and have some fun it's a good spot It's like pita bread with thyme and lemon, and that's what I love in the French markets. You have a lot of um, exotic food vendors that will sell like their specialties. You know, Chinese, Asian, Lebanese, African sometimes. Very good. She's wrapping up a cheese over there, and right there she's going to put it sous vide so you can actually take it in a plane. So now I have a fabulous fresh French cheese that is wrapped, that doesn't smell, doesn't need refrigeration. I can take that on the airplane and enjoy it back in the U.S. so I don't have to eat grocery store industrial cheese when I get home. One of the things that's really cool in grocery stores, but especially in little markets like this, is they have fresh pressed apple juice, rhubarb juice, strawberry juice, all made fresh from local produce. It's amazing. We're here at the Marche Grenelle, which is right around the corner from Eiffel Tower, underneath the Metro Passage, and this market is huge, and it is full of everything from bras and bathing suits, jewelry, handbags, and the typical vegetables and things that you would find in any Marche, but this one has the best selection of pre-made foods you're gonna find. I mean, roasted potatoes, uh, beef bourguignon, like you can find just about anything you want in this market. It is fabulous. And if you're traveling with kids, they have chicken tenders straight from the farm that actually look like chicken tenders. But you can buy fruits and vegetables, or hats and handbags and shoes and sunglasses. You can buy anything you want right here, yeah. including amazing fresh bread and pastries. And even if you're not staying in this area, there's a metro station at either end, so it's worth stopping in just to experience walking through this market. And right here, you can buy escargot, all kinds of flavors. On to the next market, let's go. This one is the Marche Couvert Beauvau, and it is amazing. There is an indoor part and an outdoor part, and they have everything here. And if you're here early in the morning, they have rotisserie pigs, and like chickens, but pigs, on the fire just spinning rotisserie for you. They have, of course, the vegetables, the charcuterie items. They have a section on beer, cheese, like anything that you wanna find, you'll find right here. And when the outdoor section is open, they have hats, clothes, jewelry, like all kinds of amazing things. This is a huge market. It's tons of fun, we're right here near the Bastille and it's just fabulous. And if you're here when the other markets near where you're staying aren't open, this one is open inside seven days a week.
This is the Marche at Bastille, right at the metro station, so it's really easy to get to. And this is one of the largest Marches in Paris. And here you're gonna find just about anything you could ever want in a Marche. They have clothes, shoes, handbags, sunglasses. And then if you go a little bit beyond that, you get to a section with food. And of course they have fresh produce, charcuterie, cheese, spices, olives, all kinds of stuff. And you can get ethnic foods and, and ready-made foods so that you can take it here, eat it on the spot or take it to a picnic. You can find a fresh crepe maker, African cuisine. They've got spots where you can get a, a fresh beef bourguignon or paella, all kinds of things that you can get right here. This is a fabulous market. I'm having a spiced chicken and pepper sandwich. It's not spicy, but it has a lot of flavored spices in it with onions and peppers and it's just shredded up chicken and it's really yummy on a fresh baguette. Sandwiches are so much better in a baguette. They're open on Thursdays and Sundays in the morning and if you want to have the full experience of a French Marche, this is a place right here. And here you have a metro station, Breguet Sabin, which comes right out of the Marche. Our first stop today is Chocolate Elene, which is right up the street here, and we're gonna have chocolates and macarons, some of the best in Paris. Come on. So today at Chocolat Elene, we're gonna try a macaron because we found them to be one of the best macarons in Paris in a video that we did. And we're gonna have some of their chocolate because not only is it beautiful, it's delicious. So we're gonna try some. So one of the things that really attracted me to try Elene is how beautiful the chocolate is. Like you see this, this little kitty cat lollipop is wearing a pearl necklace. There's dinosaurs, roses, all kinds of stuff. But check these out. I have a giant rooster here. I have birds. They have an entire Last Supper carved in the chocolate. We have bears and pigs and all kinds of beautiful things. So like I said, not only is it delicious, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to start with the sesame macaron. Check this out. I can already smell that it's amazing. The shell is so light and delicious and the sesame, it's got like that unique flavor. It's a little peanut buttery because, you know, it's a, it's a nut. Oh, I'm so happy I got that. That's good. That's really good. And this pistachio wasabi ganache chocolate, you can definitely taste the quality of the chocolate and the subtlety of the flavor. There's so much imagination that goes into the food here and they make it right here behind that window. It's like so fresh, so yummy, so creative. Like you might need a box of those. <laughs> That's good stuff. Caramel macaron. So check this out. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, this is delicate. This is really good. This is what I love about Paris. I think that the vast majority of people make the mistake to go to the big names. And I'm not going to say which big names because you know who I'm talking about. I think the better quality macarons are individual little artisan like that that are throughout the city. But this is a great address. You're going to eat a macaron that tastes like a macaron, not like it was made in a factory. Oh, this is good. I was hesitating between the caramel and the passion fruit. This was the right one. Now, I took this little bad boy here, the heart of Rocher's uh, praline. Mmm. <laughs> this is good. Oh man, I could eat a box of those. Oh, I love that. Oh, I don't want to eat anything else today because I want to. I want to keep that flavor in my mouth. This is really good. And. Here is Boulangerie Alexine. They have amazing bread, pastries, and viennoiserie. Right across Alexine, there is a little bench right there where Colleen and I go and next to a cafe, but this is public, so we go and sit here. One of my favorite morning pastries is the Aux Amandes, which is a croissant that has almonds and almond filling inside. Oh. And this is one of my favorite things. You can get a regular croissant, you can get a chocolate croissant. This one is an almond pastry filled croissant. That's my go-to at a bakery in the morning. That's yeah, my go-to too. You can have some, <laughs> I share. 
So for this one, we stop at uh, Alexine. It's one of our go-to places because they always have amazing stuff. But there's a couple of other boulangeries which we're gonna show you. But this Croissants Amand is... Oh. Mm. This is amazing. Alexine has great croissants and morning pastries, vinoiserie, but they also have excellent bread, excellent sandwiches. So depending on what you plan on doing on your Montmartre visit, this is just a really good spot to know about. Next, we're gonna stop at La Boutte Fromagerie and get some cheese. So I can't wait to see what they have, come on. Maybe we'll get something soft and spreadable, then we need to find some bread. Let's go look inside. They have the Bird Disney that we covered in our Normandy video, right there. So I took a Conte and a little chef, a little goat cheese. And she's cutting it in small pieces for, uh, for us because we're going to, uh, to do a picnic, so. We got cheese, now we need bread, we need charcuterie, so on y va. Now it's time to get some bread. And these guys were voted the best in France baguettes in 2011. And it's right around the corner from the Abbesse Metro. We stop in here all the time. Come on. So this restaurant is Urfa Durham, and it's a Kurdish street food in the heart of a Parisian neighborhood where only locals go, and this is really a great place. This is a ground beef. They put it on a skewer, they grilled it, and then they put it inside of a wrap with vegetables and tomato and spices. It's really delicious. Oh yeah, this is really good. Yeah. Very good stuff. A great kebab. Wow, that's a great address. Another hidden gem in Paris. We're right down from the Grand Boulevard, Faubourg Saint-Denis, right there. This is a very popular Parisian street. You're inside of a neighborhood here. This is There's nothing touristic around here. Uh, but this is great. This is where you're going to find great local ethnic food. And this one doesn't disappoint. It's full of flavor and yumminess. This is my first time eating in a Kurdish restaurant anywhere, and I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Mm. Tastes different than a kebab that I've had before. Not as greasy, a little bit drier. Slightly different spices and flavors, more subtle. I don't want to say heavier, but it's more satisfying, more meaty, I guess. And that is just absolutely delicious. I've got parsley, tomato, onions, just yumminess. Mm. This is Little Bao Bay, and it's right by Leao and the Metro Station Chatelet. This place is known for their burgers with bao buns, and I just found out they have ramen noodle buns too, and I can't wait to try it. I took the classic beef burger with ramen bun, and the Asian spices just pop in your mouth. This is the best burger I have ever eaten in my life. This is excellent. The sauce is a little sweet and sour. There's a sweetness to it. The cabbage and the salad and the cheese. Oh my God, this is good. I'm really glad Colleen loves this ramen bun sandwich because I love this. And I'm definitely coming back here. This is a great sandwich. Wow. This restaurant is called La Belge Frite and they specialize in French fries, which are really Belgium fries. But in France, we call them frites. This place is a casual fast food restaurant and you can eat in or take out. And we're right around the corner from the Musée Grévin, which is the Wax Museum, and a short 10 minute walk from the opera. It's got bacon, it's got cheese, it's got... Crispy onions. Crispy onions. This is my childhood right there. My mom was Flemish, so Northern France, which is where that's coming from. And this this tastes like what my mom would make. Mawa, French fries, crispy onions, bacon, sticks to your ribs. This is so filling, like in the winter, that's all you need, it's a complete meal. And in the summer months, like they have the, just the cone of fries and you can get a burger and other stuff here too. But that is so satisfying, so delicious. Yeah. Mm.
And this is a raclette burger. Oh, it's going to be messy. <laughs> a little bit of bacon, a little bit of raclette cheese. That looks absolutely amazing. I need to take a bite. Yeah. It's really, really light. It's a little bit sweet. It's just, oh my God, it's so easy to eat. It's full of flavors and uh, it's really nice. You can really taste the bacon and the grilled onions and the spices and the quality of the meat is very nice. And the bun is really light. This burger comes from Big Ferdinand, which is pretty close to Gare du Nord by the Poissonnier Metro Station. And we had heard about it many times. It comes highly recommended, mostly by local people. They don't have a place to sit down inside. You're gonna have to take it to go, but that is just delicious. So if you're grabbing something on your way to Gare du Nord or just grabbing something running around town, Big Ferdinand is a place to know about. I, I need a bite. Not yet. <laughs> okay, here you go. All right, cool. What stands out the most for you? Yeah, the bun is, first of all, it's super light. There's a sweetness that hits me, and I don't know where that's coming from, but it's really interesting. The hamburger is top quality. This is a beef burger. This is not like industrial burger, so this is a really good burger. The sauce has a sweet side to it, which is really, really good, very interesting. This is an amazing burger. So, you want another bite? I know I you do. do. <laughs> there you ah, go. It's good. I don't eat it all. Chin chin. Chin chin. Yeah, it looks like good fries. Yeah, nice thick cut. Mm. That looks like good french fries. See, I share. Thank you. And on those rare occasions when there's too many fries, make the birds happy. I can't wait to try this. I've been looking forward to this place. This place is called Aslam. It is a Turkish restaurant. They have the kebabs, the donor kebab, very authentic. But this place, I'm really looking forward to. It is rich with flavors. I can really taste the parsley, the cumin, something spicy and delicious. This is very good. It's not spicy at all. Well, it is spicy, but not scary spicy. Wow, it's got a lot of flavor. I know why uh, this is a highly recommended restaurant in Paris, because this is full of flavor. So if you're looking for a good Turkish kebab, that's got a, oh, I can feel the spice now. Yeah, it's, um, I would say it's a three out of 10. Maybe a two, I'm, I'm gonna call it a two. It's not spicy at all. But the vegetable, the crunchiness, the meat, I mean, look at that. I saw that people were drinking that, so I got curious. And when we go in a restaurant, we usually ask them, what's the best thing you do here, right? And then we order that. But I saw that some people were drinking this, and I asked the gentleman, and he says it's, it's a Mediterranean drink, probably one of the oldest drinks on earth. It's basically yogurt, cow-based milk, uh, fermented, a little bit of salt, and that's it. So I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> wow, uh, so that's interesting. All right, look. <laughs> if, you're in the if you're from the Mediterranean, this probably means a lot to you, but as a, as a non-Mediterranean uh, native, this is surprising. And uh, not something that I would order again, but I could totally get how this would be a drink that is very meaningful from people in the region. You're not going to finish it, are you? I'm not going to finish it. No, but, but I'm glad I tried it because I can say, you know what? I had a kebab, I had the drink, and I know next time I'll have a glass of wine. <laughs> Cheers. But that's enough for me. So this thing is called praline and it's a it's sweet bread with nuts and little pieces of praline or sugar and it comes from the region of Lyon this is not a specialty of Paris the best way to describe it it's a brioche bread with all kinds of good stuff in it you can grab one of those as you're sightseeing Le Marais or actually any boulangerie that will serve that and then just go and eat that on a park bench uh, we bought this in Rue de Rambuteau in a little store called Prelus but they sell that I've seen it all over the place 
because uh, a lot of people love this stuff. And since we couldn't eat it there, we actually walked down the Rue de Rambuteau, we went to the end, and there is a little hidden park. This is a little hidden gem secret in Paris. Inside the Musée des Archives, where we are, and there are a few benches, there's not a lot of people. It's kind of like you're going all the way in the back and you found this little bench, but it's a great place to relax, enjoy whatever you bought on your food tour, and this is where we are. This is good. This is an amazing treat. And this bakery here is famous for making uh, naughty shaped bakeries. It's not part of our food tour, but it's a big stop uh, for a lot of people in Paris. So, but it's not on a food tour, so let's go. We're here at Carré Pandemie, which is a square of sliced bread. And this is a new one for us. We are checking it out for the first time, and I'm really glad that we did. It's all about sliced bread. So they have sandwiches, lots and lots of sandwiches. We got our bread with melted cheese on top and a salad on the side. But now that we're inside, I'm wishing that I knew about all the other little sandwiches because they make amazing sandwiches. They cut off the crispy crust and put it in a cup like breadsticks and serve it with french fries. So whether you want the salad or the fries, you got a great option. But this is an amazing little spot. And this is a Japanese French concept where they use a special kind of Japanese flour that makes it really smooth, really soft, and just really delicious. And you can tell it's a great place because there's a line. The sign said it would be a 30 minute wait. I can imagine that it could be like really, really crazy. So now, let's go on to the next spot. This is Character du Couchon. It's not the cheapest place in town, but the quality is amazing. You are not paying for marketing here. And of course, today we got a selection of different kinds of saucisson already sliced, so you can eat it on the go, take it on a picnic, take it back to your hotel or Airbnb and oh my god it's good you can even get olives and wine or you can just get a sandwich with the same stuff on it but wow you need to know about this that's good stuff And check this thing out, just another piece of beautiful art and architecture when you're walking through the streets all over Paris, but in the Marais, there's tons of them. We just left Thomas Artisan from Rogerie, and I was expecting to love it, but I was not expecting to find the raclette wrap sandwich. Oh my God. The raclette wrap that they have is probably the best sandwich I ever had in my entire life. It comes with potato and uh, an aged ham and the special kind of raclette cheese that's typical for the winter. There is absolutely nothing like it that I have tried anywhere. That may be the best sandwich I ever ate in my life. Give me, 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 give me. Hey, oh. This is a definite stop if you're coming through the Marais and you want something amazing to eat. Oh, and the other thing they have is Aligo, the half mashed potatoes and half gooey cheese that is so amazing. And the special butters and like, they have so much stuff in there. You need to know this place. To where I belong, just this one thing keep bothering my mind. 
This bit stop is Bryce Cafe where you can have amazing crepes. And we tried crepes all over Paris, and some of them are okay. Most of the time, you know, it's, it's hard to mess up a crepe, but Bryce Cafe always does it right. So you can have savory crepes, you know, with ham and cheese and all kinds of good stuff. But today I tried the chocolate sauce with caramelized almonds and whipped cream on top of it, and it was absolutely delicious. The caramelized uh, almonds is something new that I haven't had on a crepe before, and it really adds to the taste. It's really good. This location in Le Marais is particular because they have a store next door where you can buy pasta made with the flour that they use in the, uh, in the crepes. Uh, you can buy uh, cider, you can buy sardines, uh, you can buy some uh, fondant au chocolat, which are mm, amazing dessert. So you, if you don't want to stop and eat a crepe and you know, sit down and have a whole meal, you can go next door and they actually sell crepes that are uh, already made. So you can take them back to your Airbnb or your rental and then just you know, buy some chocolate and put it together yourself. But this is a great spot. I really enjoy that crepe. Now, on to the next place. Howdy. We are at Le Chambre au Confiture, and this is a tiny little shop just around the corner from the Archives Museum, and this is definitely a place you want to know about. They sell high-end, top-quality, fresh jams and preserves and things that are made especially by hand, all organic except for the sugar uh, pieces, but it is delightful. They have stuff that's set to go on brunches, they have spreads and tepanades, they have things to go with meats and barbecue. It is beyond delicious. And if you try some of this stuff, oh my God, delicious. They have apricot with lavender. They have champagne and raspberry, passion fruit with mango. They have a strawberry with Brazil nuts that will just knock your socks off. And it's absolutely delightful. It's great if you wanna take it and eat it here. And an amazing thing to bring as a souvenir or a gift back home. It's, you need to know about it. That caramel is so smooth. There's no grit at all. It's buttery. It's the kind of caramel that's gonna stay with you, but it doesn't stick to your teeth. It's just really smooth. A trip to the Marais is not complete without checking out this area and it's understandable why it's so packed. This right here is the heart of the Jewish Quarter. This has been the Jewish Quarter for, you know, many, many, you know, hundreds of years. But this is a very particular flavor here. You have the kosher spots, you know, the bakeries and delis and butchers and things all around here. But it's, um, it's a part of town worth knowing about. They call this thing a tapioca because it's kind of like a crepe made with a tapioca flour. But this one, they have a vegetarian one. This one is chicken and it has corn and tomatoes and avocado and all kinds of stuff inside. And a sauce that is so delicious. Like the flavors are like an explosion. It, it's just so flavorful. The cilantro, I think, is that a jalapeno? Looks like a tiny piece of jalapeno, some red onions, like, Oh my God, it's delicious. And coming from South Florida, the Brazilian population there, this, I was looking forward to this one. We, this is my first time eating here. It came highly recommended from our friends at Kuma that are just down the street. And I'm so glad that they said something because going to a Brazilian place in Paris just didn't sound right, but wow, is it good, delicious. So in this 
restaurant, you have appetizers, you have cheese sticks, cheese balls, and chicken tenders, which are the appetizers. And then you get these bowls. And the bowl, it's yes, it's macaroni and cheese, and it's cheddar and macaroni, but you never had anything like this. It is like baked in the bowl. It's like crispy around the edges. I have a Japanese crusted chicken in my bowl with little chopped green onions a caramelized sauce on top. I did caramelized onions, and there's a sweet, savory, salty, sour. You can get it spicy, you can get it all kinds of ways. They have a Mexican bowl, a Parisian with mushrooms, all kinds of stuff, but like, oh my God, this is delicious. And this stop is in one of the best chocolate shops in Paris. It's Jacques Genin. I mean, there's some everywhere, but this one for us is special because we got to make chocolate and caramels with him uh, about a year ago now. So today I'm trying the Abra Caramella, which is this thing here, this chocolate bar, which is a mix of caramel, praline, and milk chocolate. Oh. oh, oh, this is delicious. It's caramel and crunchy and chocolate and gooey and, and crunchy and, and the, the, the caramel explodes. It's like, oh, this is good. See, inside you have a little bit of caramel. It's melting in my fingers right now. The only problem with this chocolate is if you buy only one, you have to share it. I have to share the other half with Colleen. <laughs> Abra Carmela because it's just magical. It is so... Stop here and get at least one and a few other things. So Jacques Genin is in the upper part of Le Marais, the north part of Le Marais, close to Republic. He has another store on the other side of, uh, of Paris, but if you're a Marais and you're looking for food, you have to make a pit stop right here in this store. This store does not look like a chocolate shop. It looks like a jewelry shop and the uh, the I guess the butler, the chocolate butler that's there, they're there with white gloves, you know, carrying these things. Uh, this chocolate is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but oh my God, the taste is absolutely amazing. Now we're at Cafe Moulot, which is inside Victor Hugo's house, right at the Place de Vosges in the south part of the Marais. This is a particularly luxurious part of Le Marais with the gorgeous square. You have the Pavilion de la Reine. You have some of the finest restaurants and things right here, but this cafe and this courtyard in the middle of Victor Hugo's home. And of course, Victor Hugo is the one who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which actually kept the church from being torn down. So this is a pretty cool spot right here to be in the middle of literary history and drink champagne. Cheers. And this is a food tour, so you can come here and have a coffee and dessert. You can have little snacks and things, but we chose to have the champagne just to celebrate because, well, we've had a lot to eat so far today. It's a great spot to come and get a quiet little corner with a nice little nibble right here at the Place de Vosch. This is a classic ice cream shop in Paris and it's Amorino. They have amazing ice cream and they have stores all over Paris. But this one on Ile de la Cité is the first one that was ever created. With a charming decor, they offer tons of different flavors, always organic with some vegan and gluten-free options. And they serve it in the shape of a rose, which is always a hit with kids and grown-ups. This is uh, lime from Sicily and raspberry. Ice cream from Amorino. They make it in the shape of a, of a flower. It's really delicious, it's really good. Every time we go to the Notre Dame, every time we go to Châtelet, you have to stop by Amorino before going home. Now this shop is within walking distance to Notre Dame and the closest metro station is Pont Marie on line seven. This ice cream shop is Frutini. 
And here they make some of the best sorbet we've ever had in our life. Everything they do in there is fresh, is homemade, and all of their sorbets is served inside of a fruit. So this is mango sorbet. Mm. Oh, this is so smooth. It's incredible. It tastes like ice cream, but it's sorbet. Yeah. Oh my god. It, it it tastes like pure mango. It's 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 natural. It's 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 light and it's fluffy almost, but it has that that nice texture of, of real fruit. It's it's amazing. Well, this is the the best uh, passion fruit ice cream I ever had. Ever. It's an explosion, you know, inside my mouth. It's just excellent. It's Oh, so pleasant. Wow, what an experience. <laughs> oh, it's really sweet. It's amazing. This is next level sorbet. This is Glazed Ice Cream Shop in the heart of Pigalle, right down the street from Montmartre Sacré-Cœur on the Rue des Martyrs. And this place is amazing. Now this shop is owned by a couple of Parisians and this ice cream shop offers all kinds of organic, unique flavors like popcorn and caramel and a jet black ice cream all done without preservative or coloring. It's all 100% natural. Oh yeah. This got a this got a kick to it because it's lime with raspberry, so it's really interesting. If you want something different than plain chocolate and vanilla, right here, amazing uh, flavor. Even one with CBD. So if you had a long day, your feet hurt, you come and have an ice cream here and have a good time. What I'm going to test right now is the CBD ice cream. This is my first day, first experience. Oh, I don't know what it is. Oh, this is very good. May I have some more? <laughs> so I'm gonna try for the first time black ice cream. Check this out. Oh. Wow, that's interesting. It's very subdued. So it's really odd. Black ice cream, it's very smooth, very soft, very good. That's really good. It has almost uh, not, not an earthy taste, but you can really tell that the, the charcoal is there. And it tastes a lot like other products I've tried with, uh, with charcoal in it. But that is a really, really good ice cream. This is popcorn ice cream. And strangely enough, it tastes like popcorn. Wow, that's really surprising because it's not like a, like a movie theater popcorn. It doesn't have that salty, buttery taste, but you can really taste the, the, the popcorn in there. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's really, really good. And the, the caramel that's in there, it goes perfectly together. And that is really great. So this one is called La Glacerie de Paris. We are in the heart of Le Marais. We're right next to the Hotel de Ville. Notre Dame is really within five minutes and that's an amazing ice cream shop. Hmm. Well, just excellent. And the combination between coconut ice cream and chocolate, oh, that's a very good combination. Hmm. This is good. Mm. Oh yeah, it's like a like a toasted coconut. It's it's got a really a really nice aroma. Yeah, and we did right to add the the chocolate in there because the the chocolate with the coconut it's just a, a really amazing flavor. Yeah, that's where it's at. This is an amazing ice cream shop in Paris called Une Glace à Paris. This ice cream shop is owned by the world champion for pastries, Emmanuel Rion. 
They have two shops in Paris. This one in Le Marais, near the metro station Hotel de Ville on Line 1, and another one near Le Mur des Jetemes in Montmartre by Metro Abbesse on Line 12. What they have here is not only a standard ice cream cones, but also ice cream gourmet pastries, which are amazing. Mmm, this is really good. And the, the presentation is very original. <laughs> this is so good. So this is by far the most expensive one we bought today, and it's also by far the best one. This is actually ice cream, but it's an ice cream cake. This is really good, man. Holy moly. Mm. That is really good. Oh, wow. It's almost, uh, I don't want to you know, take away from the, the value of all this work, but it's almost like a, a strawberry shortcake flavor. It's the, the vanilla with a little bit of the, uh, the pastry and the amazing uh, uh, strawberry flavor. That, that's really good. That is, that's recommendable. <laughs> This is an amazing ice cream shop called Bertillon, which is the quintessential ice cream shop and probably one of the first ones in Paris. It's located on Ile de la Cité, also very close to Notre Dame if you're in the Notre Dame area or around the Seine. And the ice creams here also are homemade, so you get high quality ice cream. You kind of have to go a little bit out of the way, but once you come here, you'll get an amazing ice cream. So this is a mango ice cream from Bertillon, yeah. and it is really, really good. Mm. Very, very creamy, and the flavor of the ice cream. Hmm. This is really good, refreshing ice cream. Excellent flavor. You'll see it everywhere, but this is a must. -up. The next ice cream shop is Bashir, right there, and we're right next to Bobour and Leal. We're right in the heart of Paris. Now these ice creams are actually organic. They use organic milk and they dip each ice cream in crushed pistachio. So it's a very unique flavor, but it's really awesome. This is a great ice cream to have when you are in the Pompidou Center area. And the closest metro station to here is Rambuteau, mm. which is right around the corner. Oh, this is good. Love it. And this is Gelateria Grome on Rue de Montorgueil in the heart of the Leal area. This is your typical Italian ice cream. So if you're in the mood for amazing Italian ice cream, you go to this ice cream shop. You can find one of their four shops around Paris. This one near Metro Station Sentier on Line 3. They have others near Saint-Germain, Jardin du Luxembourg and Hôtel de Ville. This is a typical Italian ice cream. And I took the Gianducha with hazelnuts inside. This is ha, so good. Mm. Italian ice cream is so smooth. This is good. I like this. Mm. You weren't kidding, there's a hazelnut in there. That's really good. It's very light. Yeah. That's that's real gelato. And this is Kozak Ice Cream Parlor just below Montmartre. So it's just a few blocks away from Place du Terre. Now this is your typical ice cream shop with all the usual flavors, but they are also a great chocolate shop with chocolates from all over the world. Located on the other side of the hill from Pigalle, closest metro station near the shop is La Marque Colincourt on line 12. That's the first pistachio ice cream of the day and it doesn't disappoint. Good ice cream, you should try it. Well, there's the, uh, the, the nutty flavor of the pistachio and it's a bit salty, but still sweet. An amazing aftertaste, really, uh, really good ice cream. Very creamy, that's very good on the lady. Give me some chocolate testing with pistachio because I love chocolate and pistachio together. Oh yeah, that's going very well. And this is Morse Galka in the heart of Montmartre. We're just 
actually a few steps down from the Sacré Coeur. Now, this is your typical ice cream shop offering all the standard flavors in a cone or in a cup. And the closest metro station is Abes on line 12. Hmm, very creamy, just like a kind of Italian style and different taste. Hmm, that's interesting. The taste of lavender, this is very good with the, the honey. This is very interesting. Hmm, mm, this is very subtle. And it actually does taste like lavender. I've never had that before. Lavender ice cream. Yeah, the overwhelming flavor is actually really the the honey. It's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a subtle thing. It's it's very nice as a as a, as a flavor. I definitely yeah. recommend it. So we're here at Carton, and Carton is a workhorse of a place to stop if you're looking for something to eat in Paris, right by Gare du Nord. So whether you're coming from the airport, heading to the airport, London, Disney, whatever, or the major metro lines, it's right here. Grab a bite. Carton is a boulangerie, which you would expect baked goods there. So you can get a cup of coffee here and sit outside on the terrace with your croissant or breakfast pastry. You can buy a baguette or a piece of bread to take back to your Airbnb, or for lunch, they have amazing sandwiches, including things like croque monsieur, croque salmon, they have quiche, they have salad options, vegan options, all kinds of stuff. So Carton is definitely a top choice. Next on the list is eating a crepe, or what the Parisians will call is the galette. So the galette, the difference between the crepe and the galette, is a galette is basically a buckwheat crepe, right? Which is what they have, the salty, the savory stuff, the ham and cheese, and then the crepe, this is well they have the sugar and lemon and Nutella. This is right next to the Abbes metro station. And you have to walk all the way to Sacré-Cœur and then you'll find all these little creperies that are going to be along the way. So we just ate at one. You can either sit down, which is still fast food because, you know, well, you can sit and eat fast or you can grab it on the go and then just eat it. And as you're walking all the way to Sacré-Cœur, if you have a salty crepe, it's going to cost you between 10 to 15 and then a sweet crepe will be between five to 10. So we're here in just a little square, a little park in Montmartre not on Sacré-Cœur, but in the town. Right up the street is Place Pigalle, and if you don't know about Pigalle, that's where the Moulin Rouge and the fancy Vegas-style dancing places are. And we got some food at Chez Cleopatra, because Momad is a very international place. You've got Indian restaurants, a lot of Mideastern things. But we went to Chez Cleopatra because it came very highly recommended, and I wanted to try the tacos. It's actually very good and it actually tastes like a tortilla. They have lots of other options too. You could get a panini, a kebab, which actually is a sandwich, not a kebab that we know it. But it's a really good spot that you can grab something a little bit exotic on the go. For somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10 to $15, you can either grab something quick and easy to go or get a whole menu. We're here at Citrobon, which is spelled different, but it's a good play on word because it means it's very good. And I've heard that this place is awesome. And I'm really excited to be here because I love Asian food. We're right in the heart of Paris. We're just across the bridge from Notre Dame. We're right by the Hotel de Ville, which is a great plaza. And they have amazing things on the menu. Okay, so how you eat a, a nem in France, take a piece of crisp lettuce like this, and then you put your nem in it, and then you put one leaf of, uh, or two leaves of uh, mint. You wrap it up good, you dip it in the nem sauce. Mm. In my 32 years in the US, I've never had a nem that tasted that good. I'm sorry, even in New York. Petit Vendôme is a classic Parisian bistro for locals. They have surprisingly affordable sandwiches to go for under 10 euros and good quick meals to eat with a glass of wine or beer. It's 
It's a short walk from the Opera, Louvre, and just around the corner from Place Vendôme and the Ritz Hotel. This place is a must for a true Parisian experience. We're in the uh, outskirts of Le Marais in a place called Le Marché des Enfants Rouges. And it's a market where you get a lot of food stores. You can buy food to go, like sandwiches, Moroccan. Uh, they also have their standard fruit and vegetable uh, stand. Uh, you can also have a uh, tea, um, mint tea, mm -hmm. and a cup of coffee. This place is like a food court. You know, they have all the regular market stuff, you know, the fish seller and the produce sellers and all of that kind of stuff. But it's like a food court because you can get burgers, you can get Asian. I found this Moroccan place um, that smells amazing. And you can grab a cup of coffee, have a seat. They've got big seating areas with tables and stuff. So it feels more like a food court than a market, but it's still a market where you can do grocery shopping. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great spot. Highly recommend it. So we found this really cute little hole in the wall. I don't know if anybody else knows about it because it seems pretty new, but it's called, it's Hooray, but I'm going to call it Hooray, H-U-R-E apostrophe. And it's right between the Hotel de Ville and Notre Dame, and they are adorable in there. They have all kinds of sandwiches, croque mazure, wraps, all kinds of little things like that, and macarons. So you can get a coffee and a pain au chocolat or chocolate croissant for 260. Like, what a bargain! I happen to love Mideastern food, and Chez Le Benet came really highly recommended with lots of stars on Google. So I had to try it. Here we go. And. Mm. That is one crispy, crispy shell with a lot of flavorful stuff in there. This is a ground lamb with amazing sauce, salad items, and the, the ground lamb with seasoning. And it's just cumin, cinnamon. I don't know what all's in there, but God, this is good. And it is right on a pretty touristic street because, you know, we're close to Notre Dame. In the Latin Quarter, there's tons of souvenir shops. It's a really fun place to walk around. And you can get an amazing lunch for under 10 bucks. It's like, I think it was $8 or uh, six for this one, but you can get them for eight, 10 bucks. And it's absolutely amazing. And I might have to go back and get some of that baklava too. So that's good stuff. Mm. Oh man, this is good. You just grab one of those for like eight bucks. You got a great meal on the go. You know, food and you can walk and keep visiting Paris. So. Maison d'Isabelle is close to Notre Dame and the Latin Quarter, and they have amazing food. For under 10 euros, you can get a classic French sandwiches or quiche or a beverage and something sweet. This is a great place to get something for a picnic lunch around the River Seine in front of Notre Dame. Bo and Me has multiple locations, including one at Le Louvre and one near Pompidou. They offer quiches, pre-made salad and sandwiches, including traditional croque monsieur and a honey goat cheese croque that they'll grill on site. You can get a formula meal with a beverage, sandwich, and something sweet for under 10 euros and eat it on site or at a nearby plaza. So we found this really great place called Rosie's Smokehouse. And if you're in Paris and you're looking for a little bite of American food, or if you just want something great to eat, 
Rosie's has amazing barbecue, ribs, smokehouse brisket, burgers. They have nachos, mac and cheese. So it's a good flavor of America, but also just downright good food. And great beer, great mojitos, and it's a lot of fun. Right here in the Latin Quarter, right around the corner from Notre Dame, and you're just gonna love it. So for this street food, we went to La Grande Epicerie de Paris in inside Le Bon Marché. And they have a food store with tons of stuff. You can eat uh, Chinese sandwiches, uh, jambon beurre and everything. But what I wanted to eat was a croque monsieur. And their croque monsieur looks absolutely amazing. Check this out. So croque monsieur, think uh, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese sandwich, except that it's got French bread. Uh, ham, cheese, and then sometimes bechamel, uh, which is a cream sauce. And this one's got truffle butter, so I can't wait to uh, sink my teeth in it and give it a shot. Oh God, this is good. It's a cold day in Paris today. Between 35 and 40 degrees today. It's a little cold. It's nice to have a warm sandwich like that on a cold day. This is absolutely delightful. The bread, the ham, the cheese, everything is, this is really good. We bought the food and then we took it to a little park which is right behind the uh, the Bon Marché and you just sit, enjoy your croque monsieur, your sandwich, whatever you order in there and have a picnic with your sweetheart. And then you eat it and then you can keep on visiting Paris. I love truffles and this one has truffle butter. It's like a sourdough bread with the bechamel sauce with truffle butter and ham and it's just crispy and like that crispy crunchy cheese on the outside. Mm. Crispy cheese. Sometimes when I think of street food, I think of things like pizza, hot dogs, burgers, things on the go. And I often think of international flavors, but French street food, like the jambon beurre, the crepes, this croque monsieur, the quality is amazing. The flavors just dance together. It's, it's awesome. Mm. By the way, it's only six euros, or you can get the whole formula with a drink, a dessert, and the sandwich for under 10 bucks. What a bargain. So light, so fluffy. It's like the flavor of an apple with the texture of whipped cream. It's just amazing. <laughs> Good stuff. The lightness of a croissant, a hint of nutmeg, a little gooey cheese and French ham, that's good stuff. That is one good, inexpensive lunch. Okay. Okay. A croissant with cheese, warm cheese, bechamel, and ham in it is just, I mean, it's great, smart, simple street food. We're in a bakery called La Croix, literally across the river from uh, Notre Dame. So you can buy this food here, go and eat it on the same river on a little bench right in front of Notre Dame, or you eat it inside, or you just take it and take a stroll to Shakespeare, which is right up the street. So it's really a great stuff. This is so good. Finger food. understand why Anthony Bourdain loves this place because oh my god this is good check this out this one is a tartiflette burger which is their flavor of the day which means it has Roblochon cheese uh, it has potato chips and potatoes because that's basically a, a tartiflette is potato and cheese with yeah. bacon so we've got big pieces of bacon and it's just gooey and fabulous fabulous mm. and it comes with the fries I know Americans call these french fries 
The French people call them frites. And I'm just happy to eat them. Oh my god. This is an amazing hamburger. It's a, it's a great stop because you can have an amazing hamburger. This was for the menu, which was the hamburger, the french fries, and a drink. It's 13 euros, which is very affordable for Paris, and you have an amazing meal. I mean, this thing is delicious. And it's not made with just cheddar cheese or just, it's made with Roblochon cheese. It's a special menu item that they have. And it's got bacon and onion and everything. This thing is good. <laughs> That's a great burger, man. Oh. You can get it with blue cheese, with buffalo, with barbecue sauce. This is really amazing. This is a great burger, man. This street food is from Cut Cochon, and Cut Cochon means pig's butt. Baguette, ham and cheese, jambon beurre. And I'm just gonna take a bite to it because this is this is my childhood. This is amazing. This is, I think, the original street food of France. This is what we had before they came up with all kinds of other street food. But this is awesome. The crunch of French baguette with ham and cheese and butter was absolutely delightful. Oh, this is good. This is my childhood. One of the things that's really cool about the Coup de Cochon is the quality of their meat. It's a traditional Auvergne shop, so this ham doesn't taste like any ham you ever had in the U.S. And it's really cool to get a sandwich and eat it here in the square. So in Coup de Cochon, what they have is what they call the formula or the formule. It's just basically it's a sandwich, a dessert, and a beverage. And it was like 10 euros for all that, so it's really affordable and you have a great meal. And the mousse au chocolat is absolutely amazing. It's a great dessert. So a bottle of water, mousse au chocolat, and a sandwich for 10 euros. You find a uh, park bench, but you have all over Paris, and you're all set. So that's the dessert that comes with it. It's a homemade chocolate mousse. Like for 10 euros with a sandwich. Oh god, this is good. <laughs> this is great. This is homemade. This actually tastes like chocolate. Very rich. Yeah, this is real chocolate. This is really good. Mm. Oh god. It's a chocolate mousse, but it's got pieces of chocolate in it. It's a little crunchy in it. This is really delightful. That's good stuff. The quality of the sandwich and the quality of this chocolate mousse, it's not worth sitting down somewhere else to get it. Sitting in a lovely square, having a little picnic with my darling, and that that's good stuff. those flavors together and have it still taste light but it's minty lemony garlicky oniony I don't know how they did it but oh my god I'm so glad I got this and tabbouleh is the traditional uh, like a regional salad primarily with parsley I'm so happy to be here I love that My taste buds are so happy. Yeah. I don't know 
let's hit this back. It's really good. Looks really good. This is really yummy. I like the sauce in this. It's chicken something. This is really good. I love that. So it's $9.90 for this sandwich, the three little beignet, and then uh, and then a drink. I mean, it's like for 10 euros, you have an amazing meal. It's great street food. You can take this on the go. We just chose to sit right here inside and eat it. Yeah, and there's a great square, like literally uh, down the street right there, where you can sit and eat it. And go to a bar, have a beer. And that's really cool. Well, we moved there, I think, is the street where you have the most street food in Paris. Well, at least from my vantage point. So this is the Romy Schneider crepe. That's what they call it. It's a famous uh, French actress. It's absolutely delicious. But all of these crepes will actually set you about like 11 euros. Uh, which is about like 12, 13 bucks. So it's really a great meal for not a lot of money and they're absolutely delicious. This crepe is called the Coco Chanel. It's a buckwheat crepe with some special kind of ham, goat cheese, a little bit of fig sauce and honey and thyme. And it is extraordinary. It's cold outside tonight, but I can just imagine taking this one to go, having it folded up, wrapped up, and taking it downstairs on the river by the sand, looking up at Notre Dame, having a picnic. That's got flavor, it's got charm, and of course, we're right by Saint Michel. So now we're having Greek food from however you say this place, right here. And we chose to get the spinach pie and a little, it's not an empanada, it's a little fried thing, and some baklava. And I'm just gonna call it finger food and dig right in. And that looks delicious. This is a family owned business and the food here is all homemade and these people know what they're doing because that spinach pie is amazing. So of course in Paris I love French food because well, you know, for some reason they do a great job at it. But you know, it's nice to mix it up a little bit and uh, Greece is not far from here so we have a lot of Greeks in Paris and they do amazing food. And this place is actually all homemade. You can actually see it when you walk in the store. It's kind of like a mom and pop shop but apparently their food is amazing so I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh yeah. That this is a Greek grandma that made some food. So this is awesome. By the way, this is like just five bucks. It's an amazing meal. And literally across the street are the arena of Lutes, which are the old Roman gladiator arenas that are right in the heart of Paris. And we're sitting right here. It's absolutely an amazing spot. Now this little gem has feta cheese and I don't know what else is in here, but it looks and smells incredible. So let's take a bite. What? What? That is flaky and crusty. It tastes almost like a really high quality biscuit and it has this cheesy, yogurty, delicious stuff inside. This is great as a street food because this is three bucks. It's actually really delicious. You grab a bottle of water and this and off you go. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a gorgeous homemade baklava. And if you're not familiar with baklava, this is layers and layers of phyllo dough with chopped up nuts, usually some walnut, but uh, looks like there may be some pistachio in here and honey and just yummy goodness. And I can't wait to take a bite. It is dripping in honey. I'm so glad I had the box underneath. Did I mention this is dripping with honey? And anyway, it's good. Just a few euros and so satisfying, so good. It's actually more cinnamony than I'm used to. And I like it. This is really good. Really delicious. Check it out. go-to food when I was Chinese. Delicious. That one was amazing. 
that one was some kind of pork. Really soft and tender and chewy, and so very flavorful. That's good stuff. Really good, authentic Chinese, right next to White Thumbo Garden. This is where locals eat. Small street, not touristic, but great food. If you're right in the Luxembourg, left bank, come right here. This is, again, a family-owned place where they know how to cook, when they do this. Grandma taught them how to do this. This is really interesting because they offered us to have a crepe and I was like a crepe in a Chinese restaurant but it's like pork and rice wrapped up in some Chinese crepe and it's very delicious actually it's a great idea as a street food because you can grab this on the go and eat it and it's just like really surprising I've never eaten a Chinese crepe with pork and rice it's a Franco Chinese crepe love it it's really really interesting It's interesting and delightful. It actually tastes more Thai than Chinese, but I guess that's the Franco-Chinese version of a crepe. Our first stop today is Cafe Nano, and this is close to Invalids, close to the Museum of Rodin, and it is just a tiny little gem off the beaten track with amazing homemade food. Mm -hmm. This is a charming little hole in the wall, just as adorable as can be, with obviously street side seating. And they don't have a set menu, like they're not gonna hand you a menu. The menu is written on a blackboard. And they have close to the same stuff all the time, like I got the vegetarian quiche, which was amazing. And every day they have a vegetarian option, it may not be the quiche, but the food here is absolutely delicious and it's just charming. And they speak English. Now, for our second stop, we're gonna go and have some of the best chocolate and caramel in Paris. You ready? Oh yeah. Let's go. So this is a uh, pâte de fruits, mango passion fruit. Typical French and it's beautiful. Oh, this is amazing. What I came here for was the chocolate because Jacques Genin chocolate, it's a whole different level. And you have a lot of chocolate shops in Paris. A lot of names and everything, but Jacques Genin is, a, is an artist and we featured him in a video when we got to go in his lab. And this is why I come back here because if you want some fine chocolate, some of the best chocolate in Paris, Jacques Genin is the address. So this is a Rocher. So I remember this from my childhood because I, I, I love this. It's filled with praline and everything. Right, let me give it a shot. Oh, this is good. Yeah, it's, it's milk chocolate, praline. They have it in dark chocolate too. This is a pricey piece of chocolate, but it's worth it. It's so good. So this, if you're in Saint-Germain, come to this store, order that chocolate. It's amazing. Jacques Genin is a must stop, you know, if you're a chocolate lover in the Saint-Germain area. He does obviously chocolate, he's a chocolate uh, artist. Uh, he also does amazing caramel and uh, pâte de fruits. But when we went to his shop, we tried the caramel and I did not know, I thought caramel was caramel, but they do all kinds of caramel. We got the passion fruit, the mango passion fruit caramel which is a whole different level. So we, uh, we got that today, in addition to a praline. I'm gonna give it a shot. This is really, really good, look at that. This is a mango passion fruit caramel. And we did that with him in his uh, workshop. Oh my God, this is so good. Like last time, my mouth is buttering, it's so good. Holy moly, honestly, this is an amazing pit stop, really cool. And I'm having the ginger caramel, which is amazing. And now we've had the sweets, we're gonna go get something a little bit savory. So let's go to the next stop. Mm. 
One of the places you need to know about in Paris is the fromagerie or cheese shop. And this little stop here has amazing flavors, all kinds of different cheeses, a whole section of goat cheese, sheep cheese, cow cheese, and all kinds of good stuff. So let's go find something yummy. You're gonna find those uh, boulangerie Eric Kaiser everywhere in Paris. That's not what we're stopping today, but they're decent. Not the best, just decent. We're going someplace else. So the next stop was a uh, local boulangerie and we uh, found this little boulangerie, which is delightful. By the way, you have a whole bunch of chain boulangerie in uh, Paris, like Kaiser and Paul. Their products are okay, and it's great if you're in a train station, but the best things in uh, Saint-Germain or the neighborhoods is a local little boulangerie, because they have amazing pain au chocolat and croissant. My favorite is pain au chocolat. That's, that's the best way to start the day, so let's give it a try. Oh. That's good stuff. You know, you can taste that good quality butter. It's consistent. It's a good pain au chocolat. Mm. A good pain au chocolat should be flaking up like that. The next stop on this food tour is right here at Viandas de Salamanca. And I know you're gonna say it's not French. It's Spanish, Iberian, but Spain and France are neighbors and French people adore this. You can get some fresh sliced Iberian ham. You can buy a saucisson. You can get all kinds of stuff, including a formula sandwich. But what we got today is this little baby right here, a little cone of saucisson bites, which are amazing. Just a little piece of deliciousness and, oh my God, the quality is phenomenal. And if you want a little protein pick-me-up while you're running through the day, grab a little cone of those, share them or not. You can get a sandwich, whatever, but this is an amazing little spot on the left bank. I love those. Those are great little snack when you're hungry and you're walking a lot and you need a little protein uh, injection. Look at that, a little cornet, delightful. This is good. It's awesome, I really love this. The next stop is Maison Thevenin, which is a little bakery here, Rue Boussy, and they have fantastic stuff. And what we chose to get today is the Tuile Nature. So nature is like plain. I could have got it with chocolate, but I like it just like that. I don't know if you've ever seen these anywhere else. I've never seen them outside of France, but it's just like a really, really thin cookie with almond inside, buttery, yummy, and awesome. So let's just walk and eat this thing on our way to the next. Come on. Next, we're gonna go stop in one of our favorite cafe in the Saint-Germain area. We're gonna have a coffee, we're gonna have a drink, and we're gonna do uh, some people watching. Let's go. This is one of our favorite cafe in Saint-Germain because it's just a little bit off of the main drag, uh, but it's an amazing place to get a quick cup of coffee or get a drink or whatever you're in the mood for and get amazing people watching, just people walking in the street, 
the Louis Vuitton store is right around the corner. And we're actually right around the corner from Cafe de Flore, but we don't go there because it's, we think it's overpriced and overly touristic and that's so cliche. So we just come here to this little Cafe Le Bonaparte, right in this little corner, the little church right there. It's awesome. And we sit not in the street, but just a little bit inside. They open everything up and you get to see everybody walking by. It's just an awesome spot. Great coffee, a drink, whatever you want to have. And voila, now you're Parisian. So we're here at Risha, which is a small family business three generations of making chocolates and macarons, and the macarons here I've heard are phenomenal. It's my first time trying it, and let's take a bite. And it's like you're breathing in the smell of a rose into your taste buds. And then there's the tiny little hint of grapefruit, which is just a hint of citrus, but not sharp. And it is, oh my God, delicious. Richard is just around the corner from Café de Flore, Café Bonaparte easy to get to and you're going to want to stop here. And I got the, uh, I don't know what they call it, the Nutella flavor because I love Nutella. You could put Nutella on anything. Oh, oh yeah, hazelnut chocolate. This is really good. It's crunchy on the outside, really soft on the inside. They're not mass produced. This is a local, they have one store in Paris. This is a local chef that is making his macaron, so it's really, really good quality. I love that. So the rose and pineapple one was so delicious, I had to go back and try another one. So my second choice was <laughs> coconut, and oh my God, this one, it's not crispy on the outside like the first one, mm -hmm. but this is, as the uh, lady in the shop says, it's like a little hug inside when you take a bite, and I think she's right. It's just <laughs> like a hug. I wanna <laughs> try it, I wanna try it. Mm. Oh yeah, this is good. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir, bonne journée. And right here is probably one of the oldest restaurants in Paris called Le Procop. It was founded in 1686. Can you imagine? They've been serving coffee here since 1686. This stop is the Paradise de Fruit, and I never stopped here for all of the decades that I've been coming here because I thought it was very touristic. It's not. It's fabulous. It's fruit. It's vegetarian, and they have great desserts, so let's go. So now we're here at the Paradise of Fruit, right at the plaza at the Fountain Saint Michel, and just across from this little church over here. And I chose this place because sometimes when you're running around, you got all this heavy stuff, bread and everything, you just want something light, fruity, and especially on hot summer days, a nice smoothie. This place has great vegetarian dishes, not all vegetarian, but a lot of vegetarian, but we're here today having a smoothie. So, cheers. stop is one more place I probably would not have gone to except it's kind of excellent. It's called La Dernier Goutte which means the last drop. It's a little wine store you can go in and just buy a bottle of wine just to take on your picnic bring it home with your charcuterie and whatnot but they also have a wine class in English where you can go inside for 70 euros you get to try five reds two whites sit in a little room in the back and I know there are other tours that bring people here, bring in your own charcuterie, cheese and things and sit in a little room in the back and it's kind of cool. So that's a great spot to know about when you're here on the left bank. This stop is about having a little charcuterie board and a glass of wine at the end of the day. Like you've been sightseeing around, you come right here, you got the conciergerie across the street, Notre Dame a little bit up, Saint-Michel, which is right around the corner. 
Uh, this is a little gem in Paris, hidden place, a little cafe that only locals go to. Most of the people in there are Parisians. You're not gonna break the bank, it's not outrageously expensive, and you have yourself a great, a great little board of charcuterie, some cheese, and a glass of wine. And that is a great way to end the day. This is the first step of our food tour in Saint-Germain and we're going to try and beginning with the pain au chocolat. It looks like a croissant, the taste is very very close, but this one is with chocolate. Take a big piece, yeah? More crunchy. Oh I'm going to leave the chocolate one for Antoine. <laughs> this is amazing. So a pain au chocolat is half butter, half chocolate, another half of croissant. That makes it three halves, but it's so good. <laughs> That you can go with three halves. It doesn't matter. And when it's so excellent, it's wow. This is good. Well, this bakery do wonderful croissant. Oh, oh yes. So all this collection of pastries, typical French today, we call them viennoiserie. Viennoiserie come from the, the world Vienna, the city in Austria. And uh, Austrian baker came in Paris and they do realize this pastry. And now we call we still call them viennoiserie with this Austria influence. So Austrian brought the croissant to France? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we make it a little bit different by today. So now this is a typical and iconic uh, viennoiserie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. I'm in heaven. <laughs> very good. In France, we have a, a cup of coffee and we'll dip the croissant in it. Into the coffee? Yeah, in the coffee and then we it's have like it like Dunkin' that. Donuts, yeah, but yeah, Dunkin' that's croissant. How we eat it. That's good, huh? <laughs> and by the way, you know, it's like a lot of people say, oh, the French with the croissant, and how do you stay so skinny with all this food? We don't eat this every day. No. This is an indulgence. I would. Yeah, you would. <laughs> well, when, yeah, you're, you when you're an American, you're visiting Paris, yes, you should have a croissant every day. But of we don't eat that. It's, uh, it's a Sunday thing. Sundays. Uh, weekend, weekend. That weekend. Is uh, it's, it's an indulgence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crunchy and light, not squished. It's yeah. very good. Mon amour, I do love you. Just like Antoine, I like the crispy end. Check that out. So next, we're going to see a little secret street in Paris of the 17th and 16th and 17th centuries. Follow me that way. So we're going to try different kinds of uh, olive oil, first of all. So this one is really buttery, very creamy. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. you should drink it. Yes, exactly. This one is great like to drizzle when you're done with your cooking. Like if you want to add some taste, if you like black olive, it's a great uh, way to try it. So. Olive oil shooters. <laughs> yeah, it's a vodka, yes. Yeah, never, you never think you would be drinking uh, olive oil. And it's amazing, isn't it? Yes, it's actually very good for your health. Yeah. It's peppery, side to it. Merci. Thank you. Oh, it smells completely different. Yeah, lighter. It's very yeah. different. Yeah. Oh, it tastes mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this one better. Really? Yeah, the first oh. one was, um, this one is Too smooth. Too olivey, maybe. Yeah, very good. I like it. <laughs> okay, perfect. So Ooh. this one is very young, very green. Very young, and yeah. the younger it is, the stronger it will be. Oh, oh it is. Very green flavor. Very green, yeah. right? Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I like that one the best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, good. I've never tasted that before. I would definitely. Now I'm going to let you try, so it's white balsamic vinegar to add a little taste. La peche, peaches. No. No? Orange. Clementine? Clementine? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a citrus, but it's... Yes, grapefruit. 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 grapefruit, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job, good job. Yeah. Very good. 
This is what, an experience. What is, this? what is this? It's a sweet spread, so it's very different than the thing we've tried before. It's actually a specialty that you found in Sicily. It's a pistachio cream. We call it the suprême de pistache. Somewhere between peanut butter and hummus, but with the elegance. Yes. With some, I mean, the pistachio flavor is very evident. It's very smooth. It's oh, very yeah. smooth. It's just... Um, Not too sweet. Oh. Crunchy a little bit with some uh, yeah. what, what, piece of crunch? pistachio inside. The pistachios. Mm -hmm. Like you have a, a uh, cooked I pistachios inside. Oh, roasted. Joe, what do you think about that? That is like nothing I've ever tasted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. And that little pot is only ten ninety. Yes. yes. We're bringing some home today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Exactly. That's the word. I was not expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. That would. You cannot ever no. eat peanut butter after that. No. No. You can't. Yeah. You can't. It's just. And you can't a, describe that to somebody. They have to try it. It's yeah. Crazy. Oh, this is, yeah, put that on toast. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Oh, we're, yeah, we're taking one. We're buying one. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to recross the, the boulevard and we're going to go to the market, the old market, and we're going to find specialties from France. Well, the next we're going to make a short stop to the charcuterie. Okay. Okay. What's the This is very, very open. That's what we just bought. You see the real color of the wine, okay? That ham, it's really smooth. You know, I'm, I'm, sometimes it can be very salty. It's salty, but not very salty. And it is yummy. Like, you can just taste that it's fine. And drink, and have pleasure to drink your wine. I can't turn it like that. <laughs> I'll be wearing it if I... <laughs> I can do it on the table. Yeah. You can do it on the table. A little bit on the table. If you are more comfortable. So this is good, yeah? This is very fresh. Oh, refreshing. Yeah. Refreshing wine. Yeah. Oh, immediately I feel the citrus in the wine. I got, mm. I got lemon. Now I feel like I'm in France. I'm just eating cheese. Yeah, cheese like out this. of here. Yeah, exactly. Well, it spreads like cream cheese, but I don't think it's going to taste like cream cheese. Mm -hmm. But it's mm. amazing. You know what's funny with a goat cheese in France? It's always surprising to me how light it is, how smooth it is. The flavor is very subtle because I have goat cheese in the U.S. and it's you know overpowering flavor. This isn't that. If this is something that you wouldn't normally try in the U.S., I'm gonna suggest that you try it in France. You know, take a creamy version of whatever that is. You know, whether it's a blue cheese, a goat cheese, or something, because you can get really mild, subtle flavors that are extraordinary. Together is extraordinary. And to the yumminess of France. Oh la la. Oh la la. I'm not gonna. Lie. <laughs> we had Karen at the beginning of the video. No, it's not bad stuff. So we got some cheese, we got some bread, a little saucisson, some dessert, and now we found a little park just tucked away like you can find all over Paris, and we're gonna eat it. And we got this little half size baguette, and we had them cut up a little bit of the saucisson, and we got some comté all cut up. 
and the comte is Antoine's favorite. And that little piece of goat cheese. Oh yeah, if you tell them it's for a picnic, they'll cut it up for you. They'll cut up the cheese for you. Yeah. Grab a little piece of bread, just a traditional baguette. I'll take a little piece of comte. You can get six months, 12 months, 18 months. This is 24 month old cheese. Oh my God, it's as smooth as butter. There's nothing grainy about it. It's subtle and intense at the same time. It's a very profound flavor. Oh, it's good. And I like my saucisson sliced really thin. Mm, that's nice. I gotta try some goat cheese on here. That's a very mild goat cheese. That's very nice. It's very firm, it's, it's very dense. But this is the same one that they use, they cut in half and put it in a chev chaud or a hot goat cheese salad. But that is uh, dense, firm and subtle and mild and it's delicious. Oh, this is fine. Very mild, very soft. It's not an overpowering cheese. This is a Croton Chevignon, it's not strong flavored at all. That little from Rangery where we went, it's really excellent. This is a lemon meringue pie and it got messed up a little bit here. This was absolutely beautiful. Oh. This. This is it. The meringue soft, it, the, 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 the tanginess of the lemon that comes with an after bite that is like delightful. Acidulé, sweet. Oh, this is amazing. I don't think you're gonna like it, Connie. I think I should eat it all. I don't think so. I think you gotta hand it over. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is good. It's my turn. Again, it's subtle. I don't know if it's the heat with that meringue. It's almost like, um, I don't know, I was gonna say whipped cream, but it doesn't taste like whipped cream. Let me see. Like, it's very light. It's not a crispy meringue. And the tart is very custardy, a little bit tart. It's a crumbly little crust with that custardy filling that's a little bit tart. And it's, the meringue isn't too sweet and it's not bland. It definitely has some flavor to it, but it's, uh, it's very soft and marvelous. Delicious. Since it's falling apart, I better hurry up and take bites and get rid of it. <laughs> take me somewhere with a fabulous view and a bottle of something. Okay. And this is Bashir ice cream. So if you're looking for an amazing ice cream, I would definitely recommend to stop here. It's not a food stop today, but if you want ice cream, I'd go there. This stop is Le Grenier au Pain, and they have excellent bread, of course, but we're stopping in today to get a little special sweet treat that you can't find everywhere else in Paris, so let's go grab it. Look, they have these things. It's a New York roll. It's like a cunha man, but like dipped with chocolate or pistachio. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they call it a New York roll. <laughs> so this is our New York roll. And she cut it in half so we could split it. So I have to give Antoine part of the thing that has some chocolate also. But we learned that there is cream filling inside. So that's part of what makes it different than a kunyaman. A kunyaman doesn't have that. That's a roll. That is a cream filled donuts are a thing of the past. I've only seen the New York rolls in a couple of places. They look exactly like the kunyaman that you'll find in other places. It looks just like that, only dipped. But it's kind of is and it kind of isn't. And it's good. I'm happy. Yeah. This will definitely be a repeat. So I don't think I've ever tried this one. And then when I was talking with, uh, with the baker, yeah, I asked her if it was a Cunyaman. She says it's not, but I would say it's uh, a Cunyaman's cousin. If, and if you don't know what a Cunyaman is, you gotta look at our breakfast pastry video and then you'll see what it is. But I basically said this is, they call this a New York roll. So I says this is the New York cousin of the Breton Cunyaman. Let's give it a shot. Oh, this is so good. Again, it's not too sweet. Oh man, you cannot eat a donut after that. I mean, it's game over. You would expect this to be like really sweet, but it's not. It's not too buttery, not too sweet. It's just right. Exactly. The restaurant with the be beautiful view is right there. There's a great little pit stop right here, just for a drink or a pastry. Let's go grab a drink at the Relais. Come on. Chin chin, my darling. A perfect way to relax in Montmartre. 
after walking all about is a cup of champagne. Cheers. We're here at Kuma, again in the Marais. This one is Japanese, and oh my god, it's delicious. Antoine had the karagi don, which is a fried caramelized chicken with rice and vegetables in a bowl. And I had the karagi curry, which is very similar to Antoine's dish, except mine has that sauteed caramelized chicken on top of rice with a curry sauce. And I got mine with the boiled egg option, which you have to do. We started the meal with some sake, which just made it that much more festive. And the dishes here are between 10 and 14 euros, which makes it pretty affordable and delicious. The closest metro station to Kuma is Hotel de Ville or St. Paul Station. We watch people lining up here for takeout in addition to us getting it here. Obviously you can eat in because, well, we did, but we also watched a lot of people line up for takeout from the window, street food style, and you can get delivery. And let's face it, the Marais is a great place to walk off any meal with charming streets and shops everywhere. We're here at Street Bangkok, which is technically in the Yao, but it's just across the street from the Marais. And we're just blocks away from the Etienne Marcel Metro Station, which is on line four. And we came here because this Thai restaurant was highly recommended by the locals. And we wanted to find out what it's all about. And we got the Pad Su with chicken and the ginger lemonade, which is to die for. Figure for lunch, anywhere from 10 to 20 euros. Um, we spent $14.50 and we were very satisfied. And as with all of the restaurants we chose today, you can eat in, take out, or get it delivered if you're in an Airbnb or at your hotel. It was definitely worth coming here today. We're here at Shea Zhu, still in the Marais, and we're close to the Arts and Medier metro station. We are deep in the heart of what must be some Chinese town here because this is very authentic Asian. And we picked this place with a couple of mentions from locals, but really because of the number of stars on Google and the number of reviews and that all of the pictures had Asian people eating here. In fact, what we're hearing in the restaurant is the primary language is Chinese including from the diners. Now, when you're here, you can eat in, but you can also get takeout and delivery, and you can grab quick stuff on the fly or have a full meal. We ordered the gyoza dumplings and the beef soup, which is kind of like a faux pot, and the food here is typical of the Wenzhou area of China. And let me tell you, it's good. The beef in the beef soup just melts in your mouth. It's so tender. This is a very basic cafeteria style order to go or sit down and order. You can get items on the menu here from like 650, you know, up to 18, but you can get a lot of them in that 6 to 10, 6 to 12 euro range. And let me tell you, this is not touristic at all. This place is authentic Chinese for locals and really for Asian locals. The food here is awesome, affordable, and I highly recommend it. They have a smoked sausage, they have cheese sausage, they have white sausage. So. Hmm, that's exactly what I needed. It's not a um, hot dog bun. It's a real half baguette, sliced in half, warm, crunchy, with the sausage, the smoked sausage and onion. That is really good. That was 10 bucks for the sausage and French bread. Christmas food is usually a little expensive, but like that sweet soft feeling of the onions with that really smoky meaty thing and then the crispiness of a french baguette like it's a good combination i got myself a raclette bowl that's very interesting they put potatoes on the knees ham on the side hmm Mmm, wow, this is not good for my diet, but this is really good. Uh-oh, it's gonna drip, it's gonna drip. 
The thing to drink with raclette is white wine. And actually the worst thing you could drink is water. They said don't drink water with raclette because the water with the cheese is going to create a situation. Oh, look at this. Oh. <laughs> to you. Now my good friend James from Spain Revealed always brags about the churros in Spain that they're the best and everything. So I'm gonna have to you know try it here and um, and then we're gonna have to settle it. He's gonna have to invite me to Spain and I'm gonna have to try the churros over there to see if they are as good as they are in Paris. I doubt it. Challenge accepted Frenchie. Bonjour. I want uh, churros. Yeah, yeah, with chocolate. Jesus Christ. Merci, mon ami. So the beautiful thing with uh, this Christmas market is right next to the Tuileries, and there are chairs and places you can sit down. The moment of truth, the churros from Paris, they give you a little can of Nutella. Oh, man. Ah. Ah. That is going to be messy. I'm going to dip it in Nutella. <laughs> I have no idea how the churros of Spain from Spain Revealed are going to stack up to that. I don't think they can. I mean, it's an official challenge. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. I dig in some Nutella. Oh, ho, ho. honey, I would share if we had enough, but I'm afraid that we're a little short. We walked right into champagne. <laughs> so let's go see what they have all around the Christmas market. So I'm not just starting with champagne. Why can't you just start with champagne? Because I want to meet the rest of the day. Oh, look at this. Mm. Oh yeah, those are nice sausage. And raclette. I, have, I see a sausage with my name on it. Yeah, and potato. So since we're gonna eat a lot of different things today, we're gonna start off. Her, her. Easy, easy, Elle. Monsieur. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna start off by splitting this sausage sandwich yeah. on baguette with onions. Check that out. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got crispy bread with onions and sausage. Woo! Yeah. Mm. Is it good? Show me the inside. That is delicious. Oh, it's deceptively light. Mm. Look at that big piece of potato. Yeah, that's potatoes and herbs. And to go with the sausage, we got this tartiflette, which is basically potatoes and onions and bacon or lardons in a creamy sauce. Tartiflette is a great winter dish. Now that's a bite. The drooling legs of the potato and bacon and cheese. That's right. All that's right. For me. Mm. It's a cold day today in Paris. It's in, uh, we're in the um, upper 30s, low 40s. Let me tell you, this is exactly what the best food to eat. Last year we got escargot here and I don't see them this year but I do see something really amazing right over here. <laughs> I need one. So now it's time for something a little bubbly. Where, how far do we have to go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You've been we teasing me with we this didn't all along. <laughs> Bonjour, Bonjour monsieur. Monsieur. Yeah. Oui, uh, de uh, ah. traditionnel, blanc de, de blanc, champagne rosé. Blanc de blanc. Blanc de blanc. Blanc de blanc. We're going to have some blanc de blanc champagne, which means this is a white champagne made with white grapes. They're opening the bottle for us, which is fabulous. That's my favorite sound. Yeah. If you can't have champagne in a market, I won't say why go, but if you can, why not? Yeah. <laughs> and we saved the macarons to have with the champagne, so. What flavor is that? That is a praline macaron with a little bit of cinnamon and crunchiness to it. 
And this one, the reason it didn't squish up in my pocket is because this one is a hard coat thing to go with all of the praline, with a praline egg. Oh, that's amazing. Look at this cup of champagne. We are in uh, Place des Abbes, Mur de Jotem over there in the middle of Montmartre. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Here we have a little crusty bread with some yummy pâté to go with my champagne. And well, how happy can a girl be? <laughs> I can taste just how fresh this is. It's delicious and mostly it tastes like more. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, they have the candy. You remember that? Every year the yeah, candy is Yeah, but it doesn't look like he has... Oh, he does have the little roasting thing over here. Oh. Like, how do you... How do you know they're fresh? <laughs> je sais, je sais. <laughs> well, that's super fresh. Oh. Oh, that looks good. I'm just going to snack on them while we walk, if you don't mind. Come on. Where are we going now? Where are you taking me? Well, let's go to the Saint-Germain market. Saint-Germain? Yeah, we're going to take the Saint-Germain Christmas market? Yeah, we're going to take the metro to the Saint-Germain market. Come on. Let's go. How's that for timing? Yeah, that's awesome. I love a good empty metro. We're right here. Across the street is the Brasserie Lip. Right here is Café de Flore. And we're just about a block away from the Dumago, which are the three classic places where poets and writers and philosophers hung out in the Saint-Germain area. And just up here is the Christmas market. Bonjour. Bonjour. Of course. Oui. Yeah. Is that al almond? Oui? Almond, oui. Yeah. It's classical, traditional. Only almond. Oh yeah, but it's somewhere between like a like an almond brittle and a and a nougat. So basically, what a nougat is, it's a meringue with an almond flour or almond uh, stuff, and then they put nuts in it and sugar, and then they flavor it however they want, like tropical fruits, pistachios, almonds, citrus, whatever you put. It's not a cheap thing, but it is a delicious thing. And it's for me, it's Christmas in Paris. All right, I'll have um, a small of nougatine. It's um, Finnish. Yiddish? Finnish, Finnish. Um, Finland. From it's... Finland? No, no, oh, no. All, no. Fr <laughs> all Francais. It's the dernier morceau. Really? Ah, it's last finished. Third. Yes. It's the last piece. Yeah. The last piece. It's a caramel salt and a pecan. Almond. Jebusa. Okay, pecan. Salted caramel, almond, and pecan. That is correct. With honey. Because all of them are with honey. I want a piece of that one too. Merci. Merci. Au revoir, Mohamed. Merci. 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 Bye. Bye. If you like this video, next I would watch this one with the must try winter foods from France. <laughs>